Hello, everyone. My name is Alfred Oval. Today, I'm going to be talking about our work on developing depth estimation algorithm for FMCW LiDAR. Many applications require high resolution depth sensing, including autonomous navigation and infrastructure monitoring. Unlike direct time of flight LiDAR, frequency modulated continuous wave LiDAR, FMCW LiDAR for short, is robust to ambient light and interference. The LiDAR system transmits the optical chirp with chirp rate gamma and retains a copy of the chirp as the local oscillator. The distance to the object causes a time delay in receiving the reflected signal. Optically mixing the received signal with the local oscillator creates a sinusoidal interference pattern whose beat frequency is delay multiplied by the chirp rate. The goal of the FMCW LiDAR is then to estimate the distance by estimating the beat frequency. One of the most prominent noise in FMCW LiDAR is the phase noise from the laser source. Typically, the laser phase noise is approximated as Wiener process since we assume white frequency noise. High frequency component yield by the interference is suppressed by an optical low pass filter. This gives us the signal with beat frequency and phase offset that are a function of chirp rate and the time delay. With laser phase noise taken into consideration, the phase noise and the interference signal will be the time delay difference of the Wiener process, which denoted as delta phi. This phase noise has second order statistics that depend on the time delay. Here are some examples of delta phi at varying distances. This time delay difference of phase noise deviates the beat frequency and it can make our distance estimation inaccurate. Here's some algorithms that can be applied to FMCW LiDAR depth estimation. Starting from the left, we have periodogram maximization proposed by Rev and Borstein. It is the conventional approach to frequency estimation that assumes additive noise instead of phase noise. Thus, the maximum likelihood frequency is the position of the peak in a periodogram. However, phase noise broadens the spectral density, so this approach incurs more error in our application. In the middle, we have an algorithm proposed by Kim et al. that fits the Lorentzian distribution to the spectral density using nonlinear least squares. This generally improves the robustness to the phase noise, but the Lorentzian curve and the fitting approach are only approximate descriptions of the effect of the phase noise, which limits the performance when there is little additive noise. There's also another approach to frequency estimation from Treader, which are more related to ours. It uses least squares on the unwrapped phase to obtain a frequency estimate. A key difference in FMCW is that we have phase noise that are correlated and has varying second order statistics. Most importantly, this approach relies on accurately unwrapping the phase. Our proposed algorithm tries to jointly solve for the phase unwrapping and the frequency. If the signal is real, we can use silver transform to extract the phase. We consider the second order statistics of the phase noise when unwrapping, which we call Viterbi unwrapping. We use generalized least squares to solve for the linear fit to the unwrapped phase. We alternate the Viterbi unwrapping and generalized least square until we reach the fixed point. Although our algorithm reach, reaches pretty close to our desired point, we don't provide guarantees to the convergence. To be better ensured, we can start the process from multiple initial points. Our phase unwrapping algorithm is inspired by finding the shortest path with Viterbi algorithm. The algorithm first requires a line estimate of the unwrapped phase as an input. Since unwrapping can be thought of as adding an integer or an integer multiple of two pi to the wrapped phase, we consider that these discrete set of potential unwrapping points as states, which are the blue dots on the figure. Because of the very large number of states, we approximate our Viterbi algorithm by plus fiber processing. 
Using the correlation of the noise for each survivor, we predict our next unwrapping point with a linear minimum mean square estimator, assuming the unwrapped phase falls around the line. The color of the dot indicates which path the prediction corresponds to. Then we predict compute the distance from our current state to the next state based on how close the next state is to the prediction. Using negative log likelihood as a distance metric, we choose the k shortest non-overlapping path out of these candidate path. At the end, we when we reach the final state, we will choose the shortest path. However, we do not know this line when we are unwrapping for the first time. This is why we do the alternating procedure of unwrapping and generalizing squares. When we unwrap the phase using some initial guess of the line, we do generalize least squared to update this line. We continue this for some iterations until we reach a fixed point. We compared our algorithm against alternate, alternating alternative methods of frequency estimation on simulated FMCW measurements degraded by phase and additive noise. The phase is affected by the line width and the distance, whereas the additive noise is indicated by the SNR. The figures here show results as a function of increasing distance. Conventional methods are very sensitive to an increase in the distance. Our proposed method is the most robust to the phase noise and the changes in the distance. The next figures show results versus the SNR due to the additive noise. Our method is robust to high SNR, especially when the line width is high. For our conclusion, we proposed a novel phase unwrapping based frequency estimation specifically for FMCW LIDAR application where the phase noise is a great issue and demonstrated it, and demonstrated that it can outperform other frequency estimation algorithms at reasonably high SNRs. Lastly, I hope this makes FMCW LiDAR and other optical coherence systems more irrelevant in the future. <laughs>